You are watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is what is a force? And what we'd like to learn in this video is what is a force and what's an effective strategy for analyzing a physical situation and identifying those forces that are present. Let's get started. Having a good understanding of force is critical to an understanding of Newton's laws. And that's what this video is all about. Developing the solid understanding of what a force is all about. So here's a good working definition of a force. A force is a push or a pull that acts upon an object as a result of that object's interaction with other objects in the surroundings. So there's two important parts of this definition. First of all, that force is a push or a pull. And second of all, that it's a result of an interaction. So when we begin to think of interactions with other objects, we're going to classify these interactions as being one of two types. First of all, you have what's called contact interactions. These are results of objects touching other objects. And second of all, there's what we call field interactions. And that has something to do with gravity, electricity, and magnetism. We're going to talk about both of these, but we're going to begin with contact interactions. We're going to begin with a strategy for identifying the contact forces that act upon an object. The strategy is built on the presumption that forces simply aren't, ex aren't mysterious. In fact, forces result when one object touches another object. So if we want to find the force that act upon an object, what we ask is, what's the object touching? Because through touch or contact with other objects, there's an interaction force that results. For instance, if we have this boy who's standing on the floor and we want to understand what forces act up on the boy, what contact forces act up on the boy, the first thing we ask is, what is the boy touching? What is it contacting? And the boy's standing up on the floor, and that's the contact. The boy pushes down on the floor, and the floor pushes up on the boy. And that's what we call an interaction force pair that results from contact. Our second example is very similar to our first example. A physics book is at rest on a desk. But this time there's a chemistry book on top of the physics book. So to identify the contact forces on the physics book, we have to ask what's the physics book touching? And there's two things it's touching. It's touching the desk underneath it. And so the physics book pushes down up on the desk and the desk pushes up on the physics book. That's the first contact force on the physics book. But now there's this chemistry book on top of the physics book. And the physics book pushes up on the chemistry book. And as a result of that touching, the chemistry book is pushing down upon the physics book. And that's the second contact force acting upon the physics book. Now this example is trickier still. Now we have a physics book sliding to the right across a desk. So we have to find the contact forces acting up on the physics book. And in this situation, there's the, the familiar, the physics book pushes down on the desk, and the desk pushes up on the physics book. And that's the first contact interaction that takes place. But then there's the more subtle situation with this rightward moving physics book is sort of adhering to the table and kind of pulling the table or the desk off to the right as it slides to the right. So this force of the physics book on the desk to the right has an interaction force of the desk pulling to the left on the physics book. Now this particular interaction force of two objects sliding across one another like this has a particular name. We call it friction. In our fourth example, we have a bucket that's being whirled in a circle using a rope. We have to find the contact forces acting up on the bucket. So we ask what surrounding objects is the bucket interacting with? So we see a hand in the picture, but the bucket's not touching the hand, so the bucket doesn't interact with the hand. The bucket is touching a rope, so that's where the contact force is going to come from. And as it spins in a circle, it has this natural tendency to fly outwards from the center of the circle. And as it does, it pulls leftward and downward up on the rope, and the rope pulls upward and rightward up on the bucket. So that's the contact interaction between bucket and rope. In our fifth and final example, we have a student who's doing a pull-up using a pull-up bar. We have to find the contact forces acting upon the student. So we ask that same question. 
what object in the surroundings is the student interacting with? And this one's quite obvious from the picture. The student is touching the pull-up bar. And so as the student tries to pull herself upwards, she pulls downwards up on the, the pull-up bar, and the pull-up bar pulls upwards upon the student. And that's one of the contact interactions upon the student. But we'll notice that the student is touching the pull-up bar in two places. So you might say there's actually two of these contact forces, one from the left hand and one from the right hand, and the nature of the forces are identical, that the student is pulling downward up on the contact bar, up on the pull-up bar, and the pull-up bar is pushing upwards up on the student. Now in each of these examples, you might have noticed that we've been talking about pairs of forces. Forces always come in pairs, not the fruit pairs, but in, in pairs like there's two of them. And when we say forces come in pairs, we're, we sometimes refer to these as interaction force pairs. That when object one and object two interact with one another, there's a force on each of the objects that occurs simultaneously and mutually between the two objects as a result of their interactions. Whether it's the baseball touching the baseball mitt, or whether it's the bowling ball touching the bowling pin, there's an interaction force, an interaction force pair. Now we'll come back to this later when we begin to talk about Newton's third law, but for now we just have to remember that to identify contact forces, you look for interaction force pairs. So we've been talking a lot about contact forces or contact interactions. Now we're going to few, spend a few moments talking about field forces or field interactions. Planets like the Earth can create a gravitational field. So any other mass that gets in this gravitational field will interact with a field and experience a gravitational force. And then we can think of magnets. They create a magnetic field. Any other magnet can, that is in this field can interact with a field and experience a magnetic force. And finally, charged objects can create an electric field. Other charged objects, when they enter into this electric field, interact with it and experience an electric force. So planets, magnets, and charged objects become the source of these field interactions. So these three forces, gravitational forces, magnetic forces, and electric forces, are all referred to as field forces. Sometimes they're called non-contact forces. They're called non-contact forces because an object doesn't have to touch the planet or the magnet or the charged object to experience one of these forces. The force results from an interaction with the field itself that surrounds the object. Sometimes we refer to this as an action at a distance or an interaction at a distance. So now we're going to talk about a strategy for identifying field forces. And it's actually a pretty simple strategy. What we do is we ask the question, is there a planet or other massive object a charged object or a magnet nearby the object in question. And if there's a planet nearby, then we say there's a gravitational force. And if there's a magnet nearby, we say that there's a magnet, magnetic force. And if there's a charged object nearby, we say that there's an electric force. Now, of these three forces, there's one that you should be aware of and almost count on, that in the questions that we talk about and the situations we analyze, they're going to probably be done on planet Earth. And as such, there's almost always a gravitational force present upon the object we're talking about. Well, that pretty much sums it up, folks. We've learned what a force is, and we've learned how to analyze physical situations to identify those forces, which would either be contact forces or field forces. Thanks for joining me on this video. Now, if you like the video, could I ask you a favor? Could you put, press the like button down below? And if you really liked it, why don't you subscribe to the channel? We've got a whole lot more videos coming at you. You can subscribe and then hit the bell, and you'll get notifications. And then finally, we have a little, there, there's a place to leave comments or questions. Why don't you go ahead and use that if you have a comment or question? Now, now, here's an action plan for you. You've been working hard and following along in the video, and sometimes you just have to do something about it. So we might ask you to head off to our Physics Classroom website where you'll see a tutorial section. And in the tutorial section, there's a Newton's Law chapter. You might want to begin reading there. And then second of all, why don't you continue to follow along? We're just getting started on Newton's Laws with this opening video on force. Why don't you come back and find some more videos and continue following on in this series on Newton's Laws. Thanks for joining us.